and welcome to Nationwide on the Network Service of the NTA. I am Nolin Edel Ame. Thanks for joining us. President Muhammadu Buhari has directed the armed forces and other security services in the country not to leave anything to chance towards the ensurance that the forthcoming Anambra governorship election is conducted on schedule and peacefully too. The president gave the directive at the resumed meeting of the National Security Council. This story will come your way later. Now to court proceedings. The leader of proscribed indigenous people of Biafra has been rearranged before Justice Bintanyaku of the Federal High Court sitting in Abuja. Omenka Amarachiku has details. All entrances leading to the courtroom were barricaded by the combined team of security operatives comprising the DSS, police, army, and the civil defense. The leader of the indigenous people of Piafra was brought in around 10 o'clock in the morning amidst tight security. Though some journalists were denied access to the courtroom, the IPOB leader was, however, rearranged on a seven count charge bordering on terrorism and treasonable felony. When the plea was read, he pleaded not guilty to the charges. Counsel to the defendant, Ifai Ejiofo, however, filed an application challenging the amendment charge preferred against him. As you see, he was in court today, and, so, and um, we believe that um, justice will prevail in the end. So that's all that has happened today in court. Defendant counsel application seeking transfer of his client from TSS custody to Kuja prison was torn down by the court. Nabi Kano was arrested in Kenya and brought to the court after he jumped bail in 2017. The matter has been adjourned to November 10th for further hearing. Meanwhile, the High Court of the Federal Capital Territory has ordered that former chairman of the Nigerian Social Insurance Trust Fund, Ngozi Olejeme, be reminded in EFCC custody following her abuse of office resulting to 3 billion naira. In Abuja, Umeka Marachuku, NT News. The larger state high court has vacated its earlier order which restrained the newly appointed Sarkin Sudan of Kontagora, Muhammad Barao Muazu, from parading himself as the seventh emir of the town. Mukhtar Abubakar Wawo reports that the court's earlier order was based on an expertise motion filed by 15 other aspirants to the throne. On this adjourned date, the defense counsel argued on the validity of the further affidavit of the plaintiff's counsel for violating section 115 subsection 3 of the Evidence Act 2011 and whether the plaintiffs are entitled to the relief sought in their motion ex parte. Justice Abdullah Emika Ila of the Niger State High Court 3 said after a careful perusal of the party's submissions ruled in favor of the defense counsel. The court struck out the plaintiff's further affidavit and held the defense counsel's argument that the plaintiffs are not entitled to the relief sought as the stool of the emir of Contagora is not a perishable commodity. The Supreme Court has said that you don't, by argument, that you don't grant injunction to restrain somebody from functioning as a traditional ruler. And the basic thing you need to do is to ask that the matter be given expeditious or accelerated hearings. The ruling is to discharge the earlier order made by the court restraining the emir from parading himself. Fantastic. It's a judicial decision and uh, we are bound by it. So even if at the end of the day, judgment is given for the plaintiffs, we can still recover that too. Meanwhile, the court fixed the 11th of November this year for mentioning of this matter it will be recalled that 15 out of the 47 aspirants that contested for the stool of the Emir of Contagora filed the case at the court few days ago and alleged irregularities in the selection process that produced Muhammad Barom Azu as the seventh Emir of Contagora. Emina Mukhtar Abubakar NTA News. Away from court proceedings to uh, transportation now, the Nigerian Railway Corporation has confirmed the attack of a Kaduna-bound train which occurred Wednesday night, 20th October. 
The station's manager, Pascal Unnoli, who confirmed the incident to correspondent Oinaya Kalooka, said the train was attacked at about 8 p.m. at kilometer 148 between Rijana and Dusi by yet to be identified persons blowing up some sections of the track and targeting parts of the train. No life was lost, but some of the drivers sustained injury. Though train operations have been temporarily cancelled to enable proper investigation of the incident, a backup train was, however, dispatched to get passengers safely to Kaduna. Celebrating six years of her pet project, the Future as Short Program, wife of the president, Aisha Muhammad Buhari, has promised her unwavering commitment to the well-being of women, children, as well as the vulnerable in the country. The journey began six years ago when at inception, Future Assured became committed to advocacy and support in three thematic areas, health and nutrition, girl-child education, women and youth empowerment. The achievement records in these areas are attributed to reliable partnerships, support, and numerous organizations and individuals. I feel proud to state categorically that the Future Assured has started with only advocacy, have succeeded in carrying out activities and projects that have direct impact on the health system, education, and empowerment. Vice President Yenyo Shibaju applauded the achievements of the program, which he said is in line with the federal government's stride of uplifting women and youth through SMEs, health, and education. I will agree with Future Assured's belief that all social indices can be influenced if the health, education, and economic status of the population are improved upon. So the, for the federal government, the president has prioritized the solutions to these issues. And since 2015, we have ensured that government social and entrepreneurial programs have an affirmative component for women. The event brought together government functionaries and members of the diplomatic corps. Ten Nigerian startups are participating in one of the globe's most influential tech shows, Gulf Information Technology Exhibition, JITEC, holding at the Dubai World Trade Center. ICT correspondent Joseph Johnson reports that this year's theme, Creating a Bolder Digital Future Together, is in sync with Nigeria's digital quest. Having identified JITEX as a major platform to promote Nigeria's indigenous technologies in the global market, and of course, uh, despite the setback of not being able to participate fully in the activities from day one due to apparently yet to be resolved issues surrounding uh, Emirates uh, uh, halted operations in the country, the team is here once again with uh, Nigerian startups, about 10 of them, you know, to engage with offshore stakeholders in fostering the country's non-oil exports, and of course, its journey to achieving a sustainable digital economy. So far, so good. Our startups have arrived, and they have started networking. We have seen some investors visit, visiting the stand, and also they are networking with other global ecosystems. So you're saying being uh, short of some days wouldn't affect the expected gains from here? Yeah, not really, because today and tomorrow is enough for them to network. They may have lost a few days, but not their resilient spirit, for which Nigerians are known for. I am determined to make an impact, even if it's for a day. Edit, the new kid in the block tells me, a determination I observed is mutually shared by his fellow startups. It's a work in progress, uh, we're looking on the bright side, and we believe that uh, things will work out for the best of India as well. I'm fully prepared, and I believe that uh, we're going to meet, we're going to pitch our ideas to investors, to strategic partners.
Right. While the Expo offers Nigeria another opportunity to dissect a wide range of technology-based issues to achieve the digital future the country needs, hundreds and hundreds of young startups and innovators from across the world who have shared ideas on AI, 5G and many more will go back with something new and a challenge to do even more for the ever-evolving world. From the World Trade Center, Joseph Johnson, NTN News. Thank you, Joseph. We take a pause here to join Hingino in our Lagos studio. You're on, Hingino. Thank you, Norlin. The Western Naval Command of the Nigerian Navy has been commended for boosting economic and social development in Lagos and its corridors through adequate security. Chairman of the House of Representatives Committee on Navy, Yusuf Garji, who led members on oversight, gave the commendation. Samuel Johnson reports that one of the contractors was, however, rebuked. This visit by members of the House of Representatives Committee on Navy is to ascertain and verify the use of budgetary provisions made available for the Western Naval Command to execute some projects. After an interactive session, the lawmakers proceeded to inspect the claims. My visit within the NAV track and some areas under the Western Naval Command, I can say I have seen an increase in the speed limit. At the sports facility under construction, it was a different game. As a contractor, if I finish, I will call Navy and tell you, take your project. It means for you not to hand over. It means there is something that you need to explain to us. They insisted that the contractor's work was below expectation. Earlier, the flag officer commanding appreciated the lawmakers for supporting the Navy to check criminal activities and enhancing maritime businesses in their area of operations. Samuel Johnson, NTA News. The message of peaceful coexistence among Nigerians should be at the front burner of reportage for journalists. Chairman Nigeria Union of Journalists, Lagos State Chapter, Adele Ajayi, re echoed this at the union's 2021 press week. Gathered in this hall are members of the fourth estate of the realm. This time, they are not here as news reporters, but news makers. Their goal is to add value to nation building through the 2021 press week with the theme Nigeria and nation building, overcoming the challenges of security, restructuring, and self-determination for progressive development. We have been empowered by the Nigerian constitution under chapter two, fundamental objectives and rights state principles, section 22, and also 29, 39. 22 in particular compels you to monitor government and make them accountable to the people at all times. We can be a powerful force for change by framing issues in a way that offers practical solutions to our challenges while keeping the debate within the bounds of humility. For participants, the event is a wake up call for journalists to ensure promotion of peace in their reportage. There is need for us to interact. To open a sort of discourse on national security challenges. Of course, you know that there are so many tribes in the country. Before the tribes can unite as one family, if you can eschew violence, bitterness, divisive tendencies, ethnicity, I think there will be adequate security in the country. Report it the way it is. Do your proper findings the way you should do it, not telling the world about what did not really happen. The press week is expected to end on Sunday, 24th October with a Thanksgiving service. Other activities to mark the event include Jumat service, gala and awards night, as well as chapel's rendezvous in Lagos. Turning to health now. Living a healthy lifestyle and engaging in regular exercise has been described as good antidote for many diseases. This formula is highly recommended by medical experts, even for a bone disorder as critical as osteoporosis. 
Adeni Itaro tells us more. It's not a popular word, at least to many Nigerians who are not in the medical profession. There is a condition called osteoporosis. Have you heard about it before? Osteoporosis. Isn't it a coin like that? Auto <laughs> <laughs> It's basically shortage of essential nutrients in the body, mainly calcium. Osteoporosis is a reality for many, especially women, with medical records suggesting that two out of five females who are aged above 50 live with the condition, described as a silent bone disease that occurs when the body loses too much bone or makes too little. Osteoporosis literally means porous bones which are weak and often from fall or even from sneezing. Dr. Sheyidu, who is a consultant orthopedic surgeon at the National Orthopedic Hospital, Igbobi, Lagos, he said apart from risk factors such as age, poor dieting, unhealthy lifestyle, and lack of exercise, poor level of awareness on osteoporosis is also contributing to its prevalence. Patients who have osteoporosis come, actually come into the clinic for other disorders. I find out people have vertebra fracture. You know, they have back pain and then you do an x-ray or you do a scan and you find out that the bone is osteopenic, which is what we describe the appearance that we see on the x-ray when there's osteoporosis. I would say the awareness is poor. Although nature is kind to Nigerians with abundant sunlight, which supplies the body with vitamin D, Dr. Edu says people must be intentional in strengthening their bones with adequate physical activities. So some people have had surgery on their part of their gut, so they are not able to absorb the vitamins as they should and the calcium. This would eventually translate to low bone production, of course, and then osteoporosis. First celebrated by United Kingdom's National Osteoporosis Society in 1996, the theme for this year's World Osteoporosis Day is Save Up Bone Strength. In Lagos, Adeni Itaewo, NT News. We pause here for a break. Nationwide, we'll be back shortly. The whole government through NPHCDA commenced phase two vaccination of all persons 18 years and above with safe and effective COVID-19 vaccines approved by WHO and certified by NAFDAC. Special arrangement has been made for staff, their dependents and retirees of ministries, departments and agencies of government, private corporate organizations and non-governmental organizations. To benefit from this special arrangement, visit www.nphcda.gov.ng forward slash corporate vaccination forward slash to obtain, fill and submit the Google form. NPHCDA will contact you within 48 hours. Protect yourself, your family and your workplace against COVID-19. COVID-19 vaccines are free, safe and effective. For further inquiries, call 0700-220-1122 or send a mail to covid19.vaccination at nphcda.gov.ng. This message is from the National Primary Healthcare Development Agency. Nigerian youths are about the greatest assets the country has at the moment. It is therefore not surprising that the administration of President Mahmoud Buhari is strategically responding to the yearnings of the youth through multiple projects and programs. Youth Entrepreneurship Support Years by Bank of Industry, the youth investment fund by the CDN, and several other conditional cash transfer programs. Recruitment of 774,000 social workers, majority of whom are youths, and so many other projects that are beneficial to youths directly or indirectly. If the administration can do all this, definitely, with a degree of patience and time, it can achieve more. Nigerian youths must come together to say no to terrorism, no to vandalism, and no to all disruptive tendencies. Hashtag Youth for Greater Nigeria. Pacifying the youths, unifying the nation. Two entertaining sites looking to get the results when they meet at Ellen Road. Who will come out on top? This Saturday, it's Leeds United versus Wolverhampton Wanderers on the Premier League line. Showing on the network service of the NTA, Silverbird Television and Sporty.com from 2.30pm. The Premier League live is brought to you by Baba Ijebu and powered by Integral. <laughs> Thanks for rejoining us on Nationwide in Abuja. The National Assembly Conference Committee on the Electoral Act Amendment Bill 2021 
has commenced harmonization of the two versions of the Electoral Act Amendment Bill passed by both chambers of the National Assembly. National Assembly correspondent Ignatius Sunko reports. In July of this year, both chambers of the National Assembly passed different versions of the Electoral Act 2010 Amendment Bill. Then, October 12th, Senate rescinded its decision on some of the clauses, especially on the electronic transmission of election results and mode of primaries for political parties. Before then, both chambers had constituted a conference committee that will harmonize the differences in the versions passed by both chambers. The committee has now commenced work. We are going to come up in a short while a comprehensive that will address fundamental and germane issues of our electoral process in this country. Also to respond to uh, the earnings of Nigerians. Whatever Nigerians want, you know, that can really entrench our democracy and make it work. It's what the National Assembly is for. Less than 500 days to the 2023 general elections, the Independent National Electoral Commission, civil society organizations, and the European Union expect the National Assembly to conclude works on the amendment process, which, among other issues, will ensure provision of legal backing for electoral technology, stiffer penalties for offenses, and strengthen financial independence of the electoral body. The issue of technology has dominated recent public discussions in Nigeria. The Commission appreciates the decision of the National Assembly to empower INEC to determine and deploy appropriate technology in future elections. Uh, that uh, so much can happen with collaboration and from listening to citizens. And this, this committee and this joint committee as well has done so much to do so. The electronic transmission of results will improve oversight of the results collection process. The process for amendment of this bill started in the seventh assembly. Ignatius Unquo, NTN News. We're sorry for the glitch in that report and uh, moving on now. Families of persons alleged to have been uh, killed by officers of the Nigeria Customs Service in Oyo and the Katsuna states are demanding compensation from the service. Mobilaji Mobirin was part of the investigative hearing of the House of Representatives on the matter. The committee has been investigating the alleged killing of five persons of the Isaiyin community in Oyo State by officers of the Nigerian Customs Service in an attempt to arrest smugglers. Families of the deceased are here again before the lawmakers seeking for justice. Also, families of four persons allegedly killed and some injured by the service in Ibarapa area of Oyo State are before the committee. Compensating this family will make most of children not to quit their education halfway. It will also enable his aged parent to get means of livelihood. And even the circumstances in which this thing had happened, we want compensation for people that were killed, and then we also want compensation for the eight people that have been injured. A house member from Katina State, Sada Sully, is also seeking compensation for families of 10 persons alleged to have been killed and a number of persons injured by officers of the Nigerian Customs Service in Jibia, Katina State. I'm putting before this committee and before the National Assembly for reparation, restitution, compensation for this, for the injured, and for the, and the, for the murdered one. The service, however, denied involvement in the Isaiah incident, but admitted that the Katina killing was accidental. The committee is certain that the Nigerian Customs Service will do what is right on the matter before it. From the National Assembly, Mobolaji, Mori Birin, NTA News. I'm still on the National Assembly. Senate Committee on Trade and Industry has recommended that the Bank of Industry expands its projections so as to boost the nation's economy in 2022 through micro, small and medium scale enterprises. 
Dayo Ogwishola reports. The interactive session on budget defense provided the committee an insight into the operations of the bank. To this end, the bank's lending scheme and performance of loans, especially as it relates to micro, small and medium scale enterprises, considered as catalysts for the economy took center stage at the session. We are interested in knowing where loans go to. And you, the donor, the giver of the loan, should be more interested. People have been agitating that they've not been able to assess their funding. And even when they are able to apply, the bank guarantees is not you know, accessible. Matching funds is for every state in the federation, and every state is eligible for this. The question to ask is how well has this program performed? We have seen on the average. Why? Because the average person believes that government money is part of national kit, which is why most of the small, medium enterprises are having problems getting facilities. We need to focus on the micro, small, and medium enterprises. And I agree, because you, as you know yourself, this is the art of any economy. Because Managing Director, Bank of Industry, noted that to enhance the capacity of the bank to lend more measures have been ruled out by the CBM to block sharp practices among those he identified as professional borrowers. From the National Assembly, Dayo Gunshola, NTA News. Let's shift our attention to agriculture now. Participants at a week-long training of extension agents in Umwahia, Adia State Capital, by the Federal Ministry of Agriculture and Rural Development, have expressed their readiness to impact on rural farmers to enhance food self-sufficiency in Nigeria. Ifo Mandu Okoli reports that the program, which is ongoing in the 36 states of the Federation, is one of the strategies by the Ministry, of the, by the ministry to hold the drift in the agricultural extension system. The program is one of the several recommendations of a special technical committee established by the Ministry of Agriculture to develop the immediate training of 75,000 extension workers. This training is one of several strategies planned by the Federal Ministry of Agriculture and Rural Development with aim of pursuing the revitalization agenda of the Nigerian economy by the federal government. Participants who were drawn from the 17 local government areas of Adia State will be empowered with best global practices in agricultural value chains. The Federal Ministry of Agriculture set out on a very large project of training 75,000 extension workers across the federation. And this is the second batch. Representative of Adia State Governor at the event, Charles Amara, appealed to the Federal Ministry of Agriculture to increase the number of participants in subsequent trainings. In Umwahia, Ifoma Ndu Okolie, NTA News. From Umwahia, we take you to Cross River State as part of moves to revitalize the economy through agriculture. 40 extension agents in Cross River State are being exposed to the global best practices for efficient delivery of agricultural extension services. The training is a collaboration between the Federal Ministry of Agriculture and the National Agricultural Extension and Research Liaison Services. Justina Ekim reports. Training like this, agriculture extension agents are being equipped with knowledge on innovations for further transmission to rural farmers. When we carry the knowledge gained here at this end of the workshop to where the farmers are, it will help to improve their productivity. The technologies that are coming in now, we go there, we educate them so that they can adopt to the technology. Agricultural extension delivery is the driver of all agricultural policies and research, without which in the agricultural ecosystem may not realize its intended goals. For the Cross River State government, this trading will only boost the rice, cocoa, and poultry value chains. With a further training of these extension workers, we believe strongly that 
uh, the targeted audience would definitely benefit from it. It is expected that at the end of this training, participants will bring their expertise to bear in food production. In Calabar, Justina Etem, NTA News. Governor Samuel Otom has directed the State Ministry of Works to ensure quick completion of the Daudu Bajanba and Bajanba Nasara Road project to ease communications and enhance security among communities to be impacted by the project. The governor gave the directive while inspecting the project in Guma local government area of the state. Charles Alba uh, reports that the projects are to also aid food production. The governor said the 72 kilometer Daoduguma and 30 kilometer Bajimba Nasarawa road projects, when completed, would enhance economic activities in the communities and serve as easy access for security operatives to effectively reach the nooks and crannies of the area to nip criminality in the board. We are committed to this. We believe that now that the rains have subsided, that in the next uh, uh, one month, this road would have been completed and be ready for uh, commissioning. The governor disclosed that the Bajimba Nasarawa Road project costs 3.2 billion naira. From Bajimba, Guma local government area of Benue State, Charles Abba, NTA News. Asma is in our Sokoto Network Center and she has uh, the next set of reports. Uh, hi, Asma. Good afternoon and welcome to Sokoto on Nationwide. The Chief of Army Staff Lieutenant General Farouk Yahya has inaugurated 20 blocks of 12 housing units with one bedroom apartment at Giginya Barracks, Sokoto. Sheikh Mohammed Deti reports that General Yahya emphasize on the welfare of the Nigerian Army for effective service delivery. I commend my predecessors who have also initiated this, what I'm commissioning to the glory of God and the benefit of our soldiers. The Army Chief reiterated commitments to provide improved accommodation for soldiers as part of the vision of improving their welfare. Then Farouk Yahya urged the soldiers to live up to expectations in the discharge of their duties. He described conducive accommodation as key to the welfare of officers and men of the Nigerian Army. General Officer Commanding Head Division of the Nigerian Army Sokoto, Major General Uwem Bassi, commended the Chief of the Army Staff for his commitment in improving the welfare of soldiers. General Bassi, who is also the Force Commander Operation Hadar and Daji, assured of safeguarding the infrastructure by ensuring adequate and prompt maintenance. The remodeling of housing units was awarded in November last year with five months completion period, but was completed in four months by the construction firm and now inaugurated by the chief of the army staff. In Sakoto, Shio Muhammad Deti, NTA News. House of Representatives says it is working hard to ensure justice sector reform and improved working condition of the of judicial officers in the interest of independent and free corrupt judiciary in Nigeria. Chairman House Committee on Judiciary, Onofyong Afan Luke, gave this assurance during the committee's oversight function in Sokoto. Sheikh Muhammad Deti again reports. The House Committee on Judiciary, led by its chairman, Onofyong Afan Luke, was in Sokoto for oversight function. The first place of call by the committee was cut up in Sokoto Division, where they were conducted around various facilities. Some of the facilities in the court and residents of the justices inspected were poorly maintained and in bad shape. So there is a need for us to have the courtroom uh, automated, and then there is need for us to provide technology in our courtroom. The German House Committee on Judiciary and his entourage also inspected ongoing construction of new complex of Federal High Court in Sokoto, awarded at a cost of 1.9 billion naira. The project, which had reached appreciable level of completion, commenced in February 2020. During an interaction with the contractor handling the project, the Chairman House Committee on Judiciary commended the firm, calling for continued good work. At the Industrial Court in Sokoto, the House Committee was shocked 
at the dilapidated condition of the place, describing it as a risk to the staff. In the Committee on Judiciary, we're asked to see how we can speak for the judicial officers, how we can bring to for the challenges facing the nation's judiciary, and try to bring it to the table um, before the House. In all the places visited, the chairman and other members of the House Committee on Judiciary interacted with the justices while the registrars briefed them on the challenges and development of the courts. In Sokoto, Shio Muhammad Dati, NTA News. And that's it from Sokoto. It's back to Nalim in Abuja. Varual Asmao. The Benue State Government says it has achieved 100% coverage in the just concluded targeted polio immunization in the state. Executive Secretary Benue State Primary Health Care Board, Dr. Ben Ageda, says the state has received more than 2 million polio vaccines from the National Primary Health Care Development Agency through the Ministry of Health. Sandra Doisi Akene reports. Polio is said to be a highly contagious disease caused by a virus that attacks the nervous system. This disease is commonly found amongst children between the ages of 0 to 5 and can be prevented with the use of vaccines. For more than 10 years, Benue State has been polio free, but however, keyed into the just concluded national polio immunization exercise. Mrs. Adeti Tueki is one of the thousands of parents who availed their children of the oral polio immunization and lauded the exercise. For what I heard, see that they've been trying to er eradicate it from Nigeria, so that's why I said, okay, let me get my child vaccinated to help the, the move against polio in Nigeria. People walking in, they are trying to, they come to help, you know, see the well-being of the child. So I think it's a welcome development. The state government, through the executive secretary, Benue State Primary Health Care Board, Dr. Ben Ageda said, over 1,911,665 children under the age of five have so far been immunized out of the total number of vaccines received. We have health teams that are working in each of those IDP camps and uh, we always make sure that they are covered. He further noted that despite the logistic challenges faced by the over 2,000 teams deployed across the state, the implementation was smooth and an extra day was set aside for a mop-up exercise to reach out to more beneficiaries. In Makudi, Sandra Doisi Akene, NTA News. Away from health to politics now, politicians, party candidates and their supporters, as well as staff of the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, who are found wanting in subverting the Anambra state governorship electoral processes will face punitive measures. This was the submission of guest on Good Morning Nigeria. Thomas Obetere reports. In 16 days, precisely November 6, 2021, the people of Anambra state will be going to the pool to elect a new governor who will take over from the incumbent. As we speak, campaigns are ongoing. INEC representative on the program noted that the commission is not considering postponement for any reason as he expressed the readiness of the commission to conduct free, fair, and credible election in Anambra state. Any form of insecurity on, in any location will have an effect. But what I'm saying is that with what we have seen and the assurances given to us by the security agencies, we believe that the election should be successful. Other guests who express concern about insecurity in some areas, however, say there must be serious civic engagement to sensitize the people, but also ensure this is done in a safe and peaceful atmosphere. Uh, talking about the security issue, uh, which they have actually digested, uh, you understand that even if it is going to be in some beast of forest that the government want to conduct elections, it will be very easy for a government to do that if the political feasibility is there in a way. But the challenge uh, for me has been the actors, the actors, and I mean the politicians and their candidates who work tirelessly to subvert and undermine these processes. Guest also called on security agencies to identify the hotspots with probable insecurity tendencies to adequately deploy more security personnel in Abuja, Thomas Ubetere, NTA News. 
Similarly, with the November 6 governorship elections in a number of states around the corner, the African Democratic Congress says the nation's unity is the most important consideration. Timothy Yusuf reports has details of this and the presentation of the pre-election survey by the Global Initiative for African Development, uh, one of IMEX's accredited domestic observer for the polls. The African Democratic Congress says it believes that after 61 years of staying together as a people, it should be clear to everyone that no breakup is healthy. The party's national chairman, Rav Toke Wosu, is urging politicians to downplay politics of money, but rather embrace the virtues that would further entrench the bond of unity and development amongst the citizenry. Our institutions, we want very strong institutions, not strong individuals who, uh, who think they can intimidate Nigerians. We want to lay foundation for strong institutions to be in place. Earlier this month, the ADC leadership received the 2019 presidential candidate of the YPP, Professor Kingsley Moado, into its fold with another aspirant on the party's platform following, all in an effort to give the party a boost in future elections. It is a vision that we captured in the mission phrase, Arise, Light Nigeria. An ILEC accredited election domestic observer group for the November 6th governorship election in Anambra State, Global Initiative for African Development has carried out pre-election survey in the 21 Africa frontiers of the state. This followed the security breaches being witnessed ahead of the poll. Now, the Independent National Electoral Commission will introduce the Mother Voter Accreditation System, BAVAS, and, and the mulling, the e-transmission of results. The Election Observer Group has, however, promised to mobilize and train its personnel on citizen sensitization and voter education on peaceful election ahead of the poll. Timothy Yusuf, NT News. We earlier told you that President Muhammadu Buhari has directed the armed forces and other security services in the country not to leave anything to chance towards ensuring that the forthcoming Anambra governorship election is conducted on schedule and peacefully. This is the report now. Usually conducted on quarterly basis, the meeting of the National Security Council is now held virtually monthly in response to the challenges of security in parts of the country. At this latest engagement, attended by Vice President Emi Oshibanju, several ministers, service chiefs, and heads of other security services, issues relating to the forthcoming Anambra governorship election were critically analyzed. As the election scheduled for November 6 draws near, there are strong fears of uncertainty in the political environment following recent attacks on institutions of government as well as individuals by gunmen. But presiding over this meeting of the National Security Council, President Muhammad Buhari directed the armed forces and other security services to do whatever it takes towards ensuring that the Anambra governorship election is conducted peacefully and that the votes of the electorate must also count. The president has directed that under no circumstances will anything be allowed to stop the elections from taking place successfully. The people have a right to vote. They have a right to select their leader and no group or individual will be allowed to stimulate anarchy and chaos leading to murderous activities. The president has made it very, very clear that any action that is outlandish, any action that typ typifies roguery, the usurpation of the authority of the state is not going to be tolerated. And uh, we want to assure the people of Anambra State and indeed all Nigerians that the government is committed to conducting that elections and it has to be free and fair. Uh, we are going to put every machinery in place to ensure that uh, people are well secured and uh, we are going to dominate the uh, place to ensure that uh, uh, this place is calm and quiet to provide for a free and fair elections and uh, that is the only the way to ensure that we promote democracy and good governance in this country. The National Security Council has made it very clear 
that sense of crisis will not be allowed to pervade the political environment as the people of Anambra will be given adequate protection to exercise their franchise without let or hindrance. From the State House, Adam Musambu, NTA News. Time for another break. The news continues shortly. Chief Resident Engineer and Project Supervisor of the Second Niger Bridge Project. The Second Niger Bridge Project is uh, a project that has been conceived for a very long time, but it has finally come to life during this uh, present uh, administration. This project uh, has a lot of uh, socio-economic benefits and it has impact positively on the lives of the host communities, both in Anambra State and Delta State. The people are very happy. The host communities, they partnered with us because uh, apart from uh, the social benefits, indigenous are also employed on this project. Uh, we can see how their lives are being improved. This message is from the Federal Ministry of Information and Culture. The broadcast media ecosystem is dynamic and requires continuous training for practitioners to perform optimally. NTA TV College JAWS invites relevant officers to the following specially packaged training programs. Transmitter operation and maintenance. Date 1st November to 5th November 2021. One week. Photojournalism and photography. Date 8th November to 26th November 2021. Three weeks. Advanced broadcast accounting and auditing. Date 22nd November to 3rd December 2021. Two weeks. The course fee for the three-week course is 130,000 Naira per participant, while the fee for the two-week course and one-week engineering course is 100,000 Naira only per participant, accommodation inclusive. The venue for all courses is the serene and secure environment of NTA TV College near Old Government House, Rayfield Jaws. For more inquiries, please call 0803-314-4383 or 0806-980-9807. NTA TV College, Jaws, training you to be the best you want to be. Two entertaining sides will be looking to get the results when they meet at Ellen Road. Who will come out on top? This Saturday, it's Leeds United versus Wolverhampton Wanderers on the Premier League line. Showing on the network service of the NTA, Silverbird Television and Sporty.com from 2.30pm. The Premier League live is brought to you by Baba Ijebu and powered by Integral. <laughs> Thank you for staying with us on Nationwide. The Nigerian Institute of Architects has conferred a word of excellence on the Nigerian Television Authority and other distinguished Nigerians who have contributed immensely to the development of the environment and to architecture. This was at a maiden edition of the Architecture Annual Awards in Abuja. Ekenen Bilwe reports. Well-designed architecture and the connection individuals have to it is something that cannot be easily quantified. With climate change and destruction of the environment due to security challenges, the need to utilize architecture to solve these challenges has again come to the fore. Gathered in this room are some organizations and individuals who are being rewarded for supporting the use of good architecture to solve societal challenges. We shall do everything possible to promote local content in Nigeria. We should be able to use our imagination and creativity to create other sustainable environments. This award is given, has been given to NTA for, for both of the reasons, to spur us to want to do more and to appreciate the little we've done. The message out there is very clear. Whatever you are doing, the Nigerian Institute of Architects is watching and we will recognize you for your contribution to the development of this country. For the Senate president, it is high time legislations are made to tackle issues of building collapse and quackery in the building profession. And this time around, we should be going for legislation so that appropriate incentives will be provided and also appropriate penalties will also be provided for failures or infractions of the law. Use of cost-effective materials for construction of affordable homes is the next in the line of thoughts considered by architects at the gathering. In Abuja, Ekene Ndulwe, NTA News.
The Academy for Justice and Social Development Initiatives, founded by Minister of Justice and Attorney General of the Federation, Abubakar Malami, has donated a vehicle to NTA Burning Kebi. Correspondent Abdul Jalil Mohammed Bawa reports. The Academy for Justice and Social Development Initiatives is a non-governmental organization founded by the Minister of Justice and Attorney General of the Federation, Aubakar Malami, offering humanitarian services in Kebi State. Considering the services offered by the Nigerian Television Authority in information dissemination aimed at uniting people across the country, the Malami Foundation donated a 406 wagon to NTA Burning Kebi to enhance the station's productivity. Honorable Attorney General and Minister of Justice of Western Malami SM, to show appreciation to the commitment, your commitment to humanity. The donated car will ease mobility, thereby maintaining wider coverage by NTA burning KB across the state, as stated by manager engineering while receiving the car on behalf of the NTA burning KB management. We sincerely thank this foundation for this honorable gift given to us. It serves as a recognition. There is need for well-to-do individuals in the society to found similar foundations aimed at assisting the public. From Benin Kebi, Abdul Jalil Mohammed Ba, NTA News. Youth are joining the conversation to accelerate the recovery process of the Nigerian economy from COVID 19 induced recession. Musa Abubakar reports that they are doing so through media premier conference organized for students at the University of Abuja. <laughs> Olavide Williams is one of many young entrepreneurs that is passionate about using youth to transform the country. I want a lot of businesses to emerge. This business is not just for entrepreneurs, it's for assignment for entrepreneurs. Now, this is not the story of zero. But let me just ask for the price because even if I won't buy it. Event planner and undergraduate of University of Abuja is inspiring other students like her at this conference organized to help youths develop themselves and be self-reliant. For young entrepreneurs, we believe that we need a community to grow and to thrive. So for every young person, we need the, business, we need the media to increase their brand, increase their visibility, and also have a community to lean on and talk to. I'm here to take out some key pointers as to how to we're talking about how you know you can move your business from where it is right now to where it should be. But the most important thing is about the process to which you can go through. Tired of hearing I went, I, I started with this and now I'm here. Let's know what you did with it from where you started to like where you are right now. Alamide believes that young people can contribute more if given the opportunity so that the country can achieve positive economic growth in Abuja. I am Musa Abubakar, NTA News. It's time for sports news and Kene Mabudike will guide us. We begin with football, where Nigeria Super Eagles hang on to fifth position in Africa behind Senegal, Tunisia, Morocco and Algeria in the latest ranking released by FIFA Thursday. The three-time African champions were ranked 36th in the world after the last round of international games where they were surprisingly beaten by Central Africa Republic before avenging the defeat three days later in Cameroon, Belgium. Brazil, France, Italy, and England were ranked the top five teams in the world. Um, I'm not sure this that will go down well with many football followers and football lovers, especially those that are always rooting for the Super Eagles of Nigeria. We need to do more. And of course, um, the players will also need to give their best whenever they don the colors of the national team. The third edition of the anti-corruption half marathon is set to hold on the 11th of December 2021 in Abuja. National coordinator of the marathon, Jacob Ono, while briefing newsmen in Abuja, says the event will be declared open by President Muhammadu Buhari. Corruption issue is not just for us alone. We need to make sure that every segment of the society are fully involved. 
Most of the government agencies are fully involved. We need to sensitize the public towards that. With the portal for registration officially opened Thursday, the half marathon will start from the Ego Square and end at the Moshoot Abiola National Stadium. Meanwhile, in boxing, Anthony Joshua has met with several American-based trainers, including Virgil Hunter, Eddie Renoso, and Ronnie Shield, as he considers a shake-up to his coaching setup following his defeat to Alexander Yusik last month. The 32-year-old is yet to make a final decision on his coaching staff, which include Rob McCregan, who has been his trainer since his amateur days, as well as assistant trainers Angel Hernandez and Joby Clayton. With sports update, Kenan Ima Aburike, NTA News. The sports update there concludes nationwide this uh, Thursday. Do remember to join NTA to fight against rape and rapists. I am Nolene Edelame. Good evening.